Hello and welcome to the show that helps you raise money for a special goal by rooting out the antiques and valuables in your home and then selling them at auction. Today I'm on my way to meet a lady who wants to turn her treasured possessions into a transatlantic trip. Coming up on Cash in the Attic, our expert uses his charm on our well-travelled host. I've been admiring your small drawers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> on There's some good news about an exotic heirloom. Wow! wow. Oh, well, that's brilliant. That is. Yes. 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 Fantastic. And at the auction, there's a surprise in store for one unsuspecting item. Block his ears. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Be there when the hammer falls. I'm here in South London to meet a lady who's called in cash in the attic to help her meet her faraway friend in style. Diana Scott has enjoyed a particularly interesting life. Brought up in India on her father's coffee plantation, she returned to the United Kingdom in the 1950s and went on to have a successful career in the civil service. She met her husband in the early 1960s and they went on to enjoy 40 years of happy marriage. Well, sadly, her husband passed away 10 years ago, but Diana still travels widely and loves to pray a few hands of bridge with her good friend Joan, who'll be helping on today's rummage. So while our expert Jonty starts the hunt for collectibles, I'll go to meet our intriguing host. Ah, ladies, look at you two, thick as thieves in here. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You're Diana? Yes. Hello. And who have we got here? This is Joan, my friend. Hi, Joan, how are you? Mm -hmm. You've been dragged along, have you? Well, not exactly dragged. <laughs> so go on then, Diana, why, why have you called us in here? I want to flog a few things so I can get to New York to see a friend of mine ex-office colleague who's not too well at the moment. Have you been before? Yes, several times. Love it. I love New York. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So how did you two meet? Was it anywhere as glamorous as New York? No. Balham. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> and how much are you hoping to raise? 800 upwards. I want to go on the QM2. Oh, wow. You know, so two grand would be better. Lovely, course, yeah, absolutely. You know, three, if you like, then I could have a private caban, couldn't I? If you have three, you can take uh, this lovely lady with of you as well. Of course. Yes, and, and if one shares a cabin, that's, uh, it is cheaper. Single cabins are extremely expensive. They're more than double. You're talking yourself onto the trip already. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's well, listen, the good news is that yeah. uh, I come as a duo as well. Mm -hmm. um, not as formidable as two, though. Uh, I've got John T. Herndon with me, an expert. He's already started. So um, the plan is you go upstairs and carry on, and um, we'll go meet John T., shall we? Lovely. Okay. Thank okay. you. <laughs> well, given Diana's travel experiences, I'm hoping we'll find some pieces of international interest as we search through her comfortable and very orderly home. Talking of comfortable and orderly, John T. Herndon has spent many years appraising collectibles, so if anyone can spot a prized piece, he's the man that can. What did I tell you? Look, we have an expert. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? How nice do you to do? see you. And you. I've been admiring your small drawers. Oh, really? Yeah, now. He's a smooth talker, you know. What have we got here? Well, this particular chest of drawers here is actually almost 200 years old which is quite amazing if you think about it. Well, what's the that? history, Diana? It belonged to my grandparents and it's been down through the family, yes. Did well, you know how old this was? No, I didn't. I had no idea it was that old. No, I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, it's so nice to see a smaller piece of furniture like this. Yes. But they're made and constructed in exactly the same way as you would do a regular bedroom chest of drawers. Oh, okay. yes. Um, but mm. this bow front here was very popular in the early part of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And the timber, of course, used is Mahogany, mm -hmm. okay, yes. which was very, very popular in the 19th century, all the way mm -hmm. through the 19th century, really, was, mm -hmm. was mahogany was more often not the timber of choice. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, is it in good nick? Well, there are a few 
uh, chips and brakes, where you would tend to see chips and brakes as well. So it's really around the side of the drawers and often the handles as well. Okay. But having said that, it's pretty good condition. And the way you can date it clearly is mm. actually not so much the shape of the piece of furniture, mm -hmm. but just look at the handles. Oh, I see. These yes. ebony handles yes. here. These are Regency handles, oh, so early 19th century, so mm -hmm. circa mm -hmm. 1815 to 1830, this piece of furniture would have been made. Well, I suppose the uh, million dollar question is, uh, we need to get this lady to New York, OK? Uh, what's it worth? Well, the value of this particular piece of furniture will be between 150 and maybe 250 pounds at auction. Oh, good. You're mm -hmm. not smiling. <laughs> you are now. Yes. Are you happy with that? Oh yes, that's good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the good thing is it's just a start. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, <laughs> I'm here all day. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with a well-placed pun. As our rummage really gets underway, Diana's friend Joan finds this appealing piece in the form of a Victorian morning brooch, which belonged to Diana's grandmother. Queen Victoria wore a morning brooch after the death of her husband, Prince Albert, which led to them becoming very fashionable. Some morning brooches even contained locks of the deceased person's hair. This brooch is made of jet, which is essentially fossilised wood and is very collectible. So Jonty estimates a hammer price of 30 to 50 pounds. And you know what? It looks like Joan is really on form today. Jonty, look what I've found. What have we got here? I think the tea caddies. So are these for sale, do you think? I think they could be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, what we're looking at here is a Chinese tea caddy. Looking at the decoration on the outside of this, this has all been turned on the lathe and also hand carved. Now, if you look at the top, this white metal top here, this is not silver, so it gives us some kind of clear indication of how old it is. Can you see how clean and fresh that metal looks? Well, this tea caddy here was probably made any time after the Second World War. So it's not particularly old. What have we got here? This is a metal one. Yeah, OK. Again, if I turn that upside down there, very quickly, can you see that that's rather fresh looking? So it's not that old. So where would have Diana got these from? Hong Kong, I expect. Mm. Now, Britain and China have this very long history with tea. Of course, tea comes from China, but in order for us to acquire tea in the early 18th century, we supplied them with opium. So there's this history, this, this combination of China, the Orient, tea, and to have Chinese caddies as opposed to English-made caddies sometimes is, is a little bit special. So value-wise, we're not going to get a very high figure for them, but put the two in together, and we're going to get roughly, what, 40 to 60 pounds for them. Do you think that's going to be OK for Diana? I think, actually, that every little helps and should be delighted. OK, we'll pop those down on the table there for safekeeping and off we go. Well, £40 won't get Diana out of the Solent, let alone halfway across the Atlantic. But it's still early in the rummage, and there does seem to be a decent range of pieces on offer. I spot this elaborate silver-plated jardiniere, which Diana brought back from India, plus this Indian copper tray she picked up at auction in the early 1960s. In many parts of India, this sort of silverware was often given to the bride as part of her dowry or used in religious ceremonies. It's a decent lot, and Jonty's hoping for a very attractive 60 to 80 pounds at auction. Well, whilst our expert carries on the good work, I've noticed a particularly intriguing image. I tell you, this is a, a fantastic photograph. Oh, my husband used to be an animal photographer. <sighs> yeah, wildlife, you know, he did mainly. Why did he enjoy animals so much, then? Oh, he was very good with animals. He really should have been a vet. <laughs> so what's the story behind uh, this little fella? This one was found in the middle of a road down by the roundabout there. With the squirrel? Yes, when he was a baby, obviously fell out of the dray. And he leapt out of the car, picked it up, put it in his pocket, brought it home. And of course it was just about that big, four inches, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he fed him every two hours with a little pipette and warm milk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kept him. And he used to sit in my dressing gown pocket and travel all around the house with me. Really? In the dressing gown pocket? Really. And uh, so he was hand-reared. And he stayed with us for three years. And, uh, oh, he was great fun. And then uh, one day there was another squirrel out the back there who had no hair on its tail. A dog had got hold of the tail, and so it looked more like a rat. We used to call him Rat Tail. And he took him off night clubbing, obviously. 
And he, he used to spare, spend nights away from home, you know. And finally, he came back. And then one day he disappeared altogether. Couldn't find him, and the weeks went by, and <clears throat> Malcolm was really devastated. I bet. And then I was sitting here, and there was a little tap on the back window. And I looked up, and there was Peanuts. And I said, Peanuts, you know? And he kept going towards the back door, so I went to let him in, and I shouted up to Malcolm. Malcolm, he was asleep. Peanuts is back. And I went out, and sitting on the table in the garden was another little baby squirrel. He'd bought his either little son or daughter to show us. Wow. But by Amazing. the time Malcolm got downstairs, he disappeared again. Oh, no. Took his offspring and disappeared. But well, wasn't that lovely that he should bring his offspring to see us? What a, a fantastic so story. <laughs> and you've got this to remember yeah, him by. Yeah, oh, he was adorable. Mm. So what do you think uh, your husband would make of you coming on Cash in the Attic? <laughs> I don't know. He always said my back view was the best. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> he always did. <laughs> but you see, he was better with animals. So he, was, he, was, he, was, he was, wasn't telling you the truth. <laughs> well, listen, I think we've sat down enough. I think yeah. we should carry on with this rummage and get you to New York. Yes. So we should uh, squirrel ourselves, eh? Oh, yes. Right. 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 Come on, let's go. Well, it's been lovely talking to Diana, and I think she's a very determined lady, as it's not long before she spots this ornately carved oak chair. It belonged to her grandparents and has been in the family for over a century. Oak has been a desirable material for furniture making for many hundreds of years because it's so hard wearing and has a very attractive grain. This 19th century example should make us a comfortable 60 to 80 pounds at auction. Well, we do seem to be turning up some fascinating pieces today. Hardly surprising when you consider our host is such an interesting lady. Diana, what have you got in your hands there? It's an inkwell. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is rather lovely, isn't it? So whose was this? It came from a great uncle of mine called Henry Copali. That was on my father's side. And, uh, yes, so it's come down through the family. I think it's rather lovely. So what have we got? We've got some, an inscription just here on the on the lid here. It says HC with love from MKM. HC will definitely be Henry Capali, yes. So looking at the decoration on the outside of this inkwell, mm -hmm. it looks silver, uh, but the decoration is not English. So where is this inkwell from? I think it must come from India, as Henry Capali was a coffee planter out in India. If it is Indian, then it won't have any hallmarks. And if you look round the rim here, look yeah. closely, there is no hallmarks on there at all, so that makes sense. <laughs> but I think that's really very beautiful. Yes. And it also looks like it's in very good condition, too. Yes. Have you used it yourself? No, I haven't. I think my mother did, and my father, but uh, I haven't used it as an inkwell, no. But what I find so interesting about inkwells, they, yeah. ha they have been fashionable for a long period of time. Yes. But really by the 1880s, mm -hmm. the invention of the fountain pen came in, yes. so you didn't need an inkwell. So more often than not, you'll find good quality inkwells will probably be more 19th century rather than into the Edwardian 20th century period. Mm -hmm. But I think this is absolutely charming, and of course mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who would love to still have this on their desk because yes. they're more decorative so, rather than anything else. So is this an object now you might think of selling? Yes, I think, I think I'll have to part with it. <laughs> well, I think it, it weighs against it that it's not British, mm -hmm. because those hallmarks give it absolute clarity that it's mm -hmm. silver. Mm -hmm. So in an auction catalogue, you can't call it silver, it'd be called white metal. Mm -hmm. But everyone will know that it's silver. Mm -hmm. It really is good enough quality to be mm -hmm. silver. So at auction, that's 60, 80 pounds of anybody's money. Oh, good. Happy about that? Yes, I'm pleased with that. I'll look <laughs> after that very carefully for oh, you. Good. Okay. <laughs> Let's carry on. Right. Well, we've seen a lot of 60 to 80 pound estimates from John T today. But if Diana's going to make it to New York, let's hope the inkwell brings in a good deal more than that on auction day.